What's up guys, it is the T-Ball and I'm back with another video. So today we're going to be going over why Milos Chidosic will win the Rookie of the Year award for the 2017-18 to NBA season with the Los Angeles Clippers. So before I start, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more NBA content as I'll be putting out some great NBA videos throughout the rest of the season and throughout the playoffs when it comes as well. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. So Milos has had a solid preseason overall. He has averaged 6.8 points per game, 5.5 assists per game. 1.5 rebounds, 1 steal, 0.5 blocks, and 2.5 turnovers per game in 25 minutes per game. He has struggled with his shot as he averaged 36% shooting from the field, though that field goal percentage has been brought down by his first game where he was just a little rusty and he shot 05, but from 3 he has been great as he has shot 42.9% from downtown. So Milos has a great chance to win the Rookie of the Year award. He will have the ball in his hands a ton this year as a main ball handler without Chris Paul. And he should have a big opportunity to rack up a ton of assists playing next to guys like Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan. We've already seen him throw lobs to Jordan in transition and in the half court sets as well. And those are just easy assists for Milos. And not to mention, we've seen him throw some nice cross court passes at times to Wesley Johnson for the open three pointer where Johnson is a solid three point shooter. So that can definitely get Milos some more assists as well. And also once Danilo Gallinari comes back, I can definitely see Milos finding Gallo for those easy twos on cuts and for open threes as well. Not to mention Milos can also do some scoring himself as he has been a crafty finisher in the Euroleague and we've seen a couple of nice plays in the preseason as well. And obviously he can hit the three point shot. What I really like from Milos just preseason was at times I saw him come off picks where he got the ball back and he hit the mid range jump shot. So once Milos gets more used to the NBA and the pace of the game. I'm pretty sure that he even said in one interview that the NBA was much different from the EuroLeague, it was much faster pace and just in general uh, much quicker. So once he gets you know used to the NBA, I expect to see him putting up 12 to 15 points per game, getting a lot of points from crafty finishes at the rim and also from jumpers and especially from the three-point line. So the main reason why I think Milos has an advantage over other rookies such as Lonzo Ball Ben Simmons and Dennis Smith Jr. is the fact that the Clippers without Chris Paul will still be in playoff contention and I do think they will be a playoff team come playoff time. So I see them winning around 45 to 50 games. I know a lot of you guys are going to say, well, that, you know, that's too much. They lost Chris Paul, a superstar, but, you know, they also did get guys like Patrick Beverly, Sam Decker, Danilo Gallinari, and obviously Milos to join them and replace Chris Paul. Obviously, those guys can't all replace what Chris Paul does for the team, but they can definitely replace at least a lot of his production. And I still think they're going to be an overall very solid team, especially with Milos running the offense. And I still think they will be a playoff team, even in the brutal Western Conference. We even saw last year that Malcolm Brogdon won the Rookie of the Year award, even though Joel Embiid and Dario Saric had much better stats than him. Obviously, Embiid played only 31 games, but he did average 20 points about eight rebounds and two and a half blocks per game. While Saric put up some good numbers as well, not as good as Embiid, but he did play a lot more games and he averaged around 13 points and six rebounds per game for the Sixers, which were better numbers overall than Brogdon. But the fact is the Sixers did not make the playoffs. I'm pretty sure they won 28 games, double check me on that. While the Bucks made the playoffs as the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference, where Brogdon was a rotation player and he got a good amount of minutes on the team and honestly, it doesn't seem like the Lakers or the Mavs have a great chance at making the playoffs next year. I mean, I definitely hope the Lakers do and the Mavs as well as I want to see for the Lakers. I want to see Lonzo Ball play in the playoffs. That'll be so fun to watch. And also for the Mavs, I want to see Nowitzki at least get one more playoff run in, but it's not too likely. And for the Sixers, I definitely think they do have a chance to make the playoffs, but definitely not as high of a chance as the Clippers do. As the Clippers have proven stars like Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan and great rotation players as well to support them, such as Danilo Gallinari, Patrick Beverly, Sam Decker, and obviously Milos Chidosic, while the Sixers have a lot of young guys and rookies such as, you know, Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, Marco Fultz, and other guys as well. So it's definitely going to be hard for them to make the playoffs with their inexperience, and I'm definitely expecting to see a lot of mistakes throughout the game, such as a lot of turnovers and some bad plays for the young Sixers, but I definitely think, say, in a couple of years, they will be a very good team, as long as, you know, Embiid and Simmons and also Fultz stay healthy. So say Ben Simmons, Lonzo Ball, Milos Tadosic, and Dennis Smith Jr. all put up similar numbers as they all have 
good numbers for rookies as I can definitely see Simmons averaging somewhere around 15 points, 6 assists, and say 6 rebounds a game. Um, and also Alonzo Ball, possibly 14 points, 8 assists, and 5 rebounds a game, while Smith Jr. can get around 15 to 16 points per game and 5 to 6 assists. And I can also see Milos getting around 13 points and 7 assists per game. So as long as they all put up similar numbers, but Milos and the Clippers make the playoffs, while the other guys don't, I definitely think Milos has the advantage over that, as we saw last year, as I said before. Brogdon didn't have exactly the best numbers as a rookie, but he still won the Rookie of the Year award as his team made the playoffs, and if Milos and the Clippers make the playoffs, as I said before, I definitely think he will have the highest chance of winning the Rookie of the Year award if those other teams of the respective other rookies do not make the playoffs. So that's a wrap. Thanks guys for watching this quick little video. If you guys did enjoy, be sure you should drop a like and subscribe for more NBA videos. And I will be doing some more Milos videos possibly throughout the rest of the season. As I really do like this game, it's very fun to watch. And I will be keeping an eye out on him a lot, um, as I said before. So yeah, so that's it. Um, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys soon for my next video. Peace.